Hi, my name is Alexander Myers, and I'm a proud member of the European SharePoint community. In this video, you will learn how to configure high trust for provider hosted apps using SSL in an on premise environment. So, I'm involved in a lot of uh, on premise deployments at customers. In the future, these customers want to move to the cloud. That means that we need to rethink how we create custom solutions. Instead of doing it the old way, we need to start using apps. One of these apps is the provider hosted app. In this demo, I will explain how you will configure this to get it up and running. So we need to start to define first the domains we want to use. In this case, I'm using for my SharePoint website, uh, the HTTPS contossoweb.com and for my provider hosted apps I created the domain apphost-contossoweb.com My app is called my app and will be part of that domain. Um, my environment is a, a single server farm. In this case makes it a lot easier to configure. Um, but it does not differ that much from test acceptance and production environments except that you will use need to use other IP addresses or uh, real certificates and uh, firewall settings. So the first thing we need to have is the SharePoint website. So if I go into the web application environment of central administration, you can see here that I've created a Contoso web application on SSL. Um, the second thing what I need is, uh, is on IS is my uh, provider hosted apps site. Uh, now, what I said was that my provider hosted app is called my app, so I created myapp.apphost-contossoweb.com and the only thing I did was setting the authentication, the Windows authentication enabled. By default it's disabled. So those two are now in place. Um, to make sure that I can uh, run apps in my SharePoint environment, I need to run a script which uh, enable site loading of apps. It allows me to use developer directly on a, a team site instead on a developer site. Okay, the next thing I need to do is to configure DNS. Um, the two domains need to be in the forward lookup zones. So I create a forward lookup zone for Contos Web with an A record to itself. Um, and I did the same for my app host, ContosWeb.com, also an A record. And an extra one which is an alias C name, um, which makes the asterisk dot app host dash contossoweb.com. This allows me to create multiple provider hosted apps running under the same domain with using the same SSL. So the next thing we need to do is to create the certificates. The certificates um, in my case, um, I am using self-signed certificates. For a production environment, you would buy certificates. But because uh, wildcard certificates are really expensive for development, test, and acceptance purposes, I always suggest to use the self-signed ones. There are a lot of tools uh, present on the, uh, which you can use, like the self-SSL, um, to create those wildcard certificates. But what I've noticed is that most of those tools have still problems when you use multiple wildcard certificates on the same server. In my case, my single server farm. So, um, my experience with MakeCert is, is, is good, and I know that using, makes, uh, using certificates based on MakeCert will work. So this script creates first a root certificate uh, called Contoso Web Root, and then creates, in this case, um, one for contossoweb.com, which is not a wildcard, and one for apphost-contossoweb.com, which is a wildcard. As you can see on the asterisk here, both, both put under the root. When you run the, uh, uh, the, the script, it generates a certificate. So if you go into the certificates, you will notice that under personal and certificates, you will find those just generated certificates. The next thing you need to do is to export those to the share files because we need that when we go and try create a high trust. But you also need them to ex to import them again under trust root certification authorities to make sure that your browser is not complaining that 
certificates are not trusted. There are still self-signed certificates. And for SharePoint, we need to put them under SharePoint certificates. The next step we need to do is go back to IIS and set the certificates for the, the web applications. So the first one is for contosoweb.com and going to bindings and then uh, uh, setting it to HTTPS. Um, you specify here the contosoweb.com SSL certificate. It's important to, uh, uh, to uh, enable required server name indication because we will be running multiple SSL certificates. The same is done for my app.apphost-contosweb.com and that has the other certificate and also the required server name indication turned on. So the next thing we need to do is to um, get the private key of my certificate for my app host domain and from that SSL certificate and also the issuer ID because I need that to create the high trust. So we go back to the certificates and um, to get the private key we just do an export, select that we want to have the private key and we leave everything default and we define a password. After this, it creates the private key, which will be later on used when creating the provider hosted app. The second thing we need to do is to get the issuer ID, and that's done by double clicking the certificate. Go to details and look for authority key identifier. This is a range of numbers and uh, digits, and you will need to, call to, to convert this to a GUID um, uh, to use during trust and during creation of the provider hosted app. So, next thing we need to do is to create the high trust. For that we need a script, and that script needs a uh, path to the certification file. Secondly, it needs the issuer ID, uh, defined as a GUID, and, which is important, everything in uppercase. Running the high trust script will actually generate a trust um, under my security managed trust you will see now the trust here. And if you open it, you will see that the trust is now between my app host, contosoweb.com, and SharePoint itself. So we are almost there. The last thing we need to do is actually cre create the provider hosted app. Now for that we go to my Visual Studio environment. When you create a provider hosted app, it requests the uh, private key, the password for the private key, and also the issuer ID. Um, after creation, those three th uh, values are placed into the web.config. It's very important to make sure that the issuer ID, in this case now, is everything in lower case. Um, when the project is created, we have to do two other things. One is we have to mention in the app manifest XML file the actual path to my myapp.apphost-contosweb.com. Otherwise, it will go to my local host when I just do a run. I want to use it in the actual place where I created the web application for my uh, app host, for my provider hosted app. The second thing you need to do is change the way of how you get your client context. Because it's a provider hosted app and you're not running in Azure but just on-premise, there is no context token, which means you need to use the token helper and the get as to as client context with Windows identity to get your client context. So if everything is, cha everything is changed and rebuilt and compiled, you publish your app to uh, the created web application. And the second thing you do is uh, you publish your app, uh, uh, your, your app itself uh, to, uh, to the SharePoint environment. So if I now go to contoso.web.com, uh, you will see that I have my app here. And by clicking on my app, you will see that I'm redirected now to my app.apphost-contosoweb.com. So let's wrap up the demo. Um, wildcard certificates are very expensive. So try to use self-signed certificates for development, test, and acceptance purposes. And use only official certificates for your production environment. What I've noticed is that some of the tools 
create problems when you want to use multiple wildcard certificates. So the best way to do this is to use make cert. Another thing to be aware of is the issuer ID and how it's used. When you create your high trust using PowerShell, you need the issuer ID to be uppercase GUID. But when you create a profile hosted app to Visual Studio, you need to enter that same GUID, but then in lowercase. Another thing you have to take into account is that there is no context token when you have a provider hosted app in an on-premise environment. So to get the client context, you need to use token helper dot get s 2 s client context with Windows identity. You have seen in the demo that it takes a lot of steps to actually configure and hide trust. And not, not every part is handled in this demo. So check my blog for more in-depth information about this subject. Thanks for watching this video. Why not check out some more great how-to videos or subscribe to our YouTube channel for new videos as they're released.